Oh. oh, hi. Welcome to Plumbing School. And this is how you properly replace a toilet. The minimum tools required to carry out this project are a pair of pliers, a mini hacksaw, a utility knife with a good sharp blade. I also recommend a set of screwdrivers, namely large slotted head and Phillips head, an open end wrench or deep socket set, a level, and notably a wet and dry vacuum cleaner ready to suck up fluids, which I promise will make this job a whole lot easier. For materials you may need, a toilet flange sponge gasket or wax gasket of a minimum half inch thickness, more on that later, 5 16 inch diameter toilet bolts, nuts and washers made of solid brass or a corrosion proof material, rubberized toilet shims to help compensate for any uneven floor surfaces, which may cause the toilet to rock or shift, and finally we'll also be needing a replacement toilet. Today we'll be installing the time-tested American Standard Cadet two-piece toilet. A very fine toilet, if a toilet could ever be considered fine. And this is what I'll be replacing. Sure, it looks alright, but looks can be deceiving, especially in plumbing. Okay, let's get started. The very first thing we'll need to do is isolate the toilet's water supply. Lucky for us, all toilets are required by code to have their own dedicated shutoff valve. What's not guaranteed is whether they keep working. An old valve such as this one may become seized, stuck or even leak after years of not being used. If so, replacement is recommended. Before installing the old toilet, we'll need to evacuate all that water from the tank and bowl. And here's where our wet and dry vacuum comes into play. Before you proceed to vacuum out the water, you want to eliminate as much water as possible by flushing the toilet and perhaps plunging the bowl with a toilet plunger. And then vacuum away. If you don't have a wet and dry vacuum, you can always remove the excess water by soaking it up using a large sponge, which of course means having to stick your hands in here. <laughs> Whatever your means, make sure you remove all remaining water to avoid creating a wet trail across the building as you carry out the old toilet. If you still see water trickling into the tank after you removed all the sitting water, then that probably means that your isolation valve is passing water and requires more tightening or outright replacement. If all's good, then proceed to loosen and remove the toilet supply tube and dispose it. Do not reuse it. Keep your wet and dry vacuum or an absorbent towel handy to catch any residual water still within the tube. With the tube removed, inspect the valve to ensure that it does indeed hold. This valve still seems to be doing its job, so we'll leave it for today. Proceed to remove the two nuts at the base that are holding the toilet down against the toilet flange. Note that if the bolts happen to be rusted out, you may need to cut them using your mini hacksaw or an electric cutoff tool. Hence the importance of using corrosion resistant materials. With the nuts removed, proceed to lift the toilet straight up and set it aside for disposal later on. If you're removing a two-piece toilet, it may be easier to remove the tank from the bowl to make transport easier, or have someone else help you carry the toilet out. Your back will thank you for it. Now's a great time to inspect your toilet flange to make sure that there are no deficiencies. Pay particular attention to the toilet bolt slots to ensure that they're not cracked, lifted, or broken off, which is common with old ABS flanges due to over-tightening. You can confirm this by gently pulling on the slots with your pliers if the flange is damaged, it may be best to replace it outright, which is a subject for another day. And here's a really important part, determining the thickness of the new flange gasket that will be sealing the toilet's discharge. The thickness of the new flange gasket required depends on the height difference between the face of the flange and the floor surface. This is most easily determined by placing a level across the floor and measuring the difference. As a general rule of thumb, if the flange is flush with the floor, then a three quarter inch gasket thickness will do. If the flange is no more than a quarter inch below the floor surface, you're going to need a one inch thick gasket. If the flange is sitting on top of the finished floor, a half inch gasket will suffice and may actually prove a little too thick to ensure that the toilet sits firmly onto the floor. In such an event, the gasket may need to be shaved down a bit. If the flange happens to be way deep below the floor, or if you're simply not confident with determining the gasket thickness, you may want to resort to specialized solutions, such as this Fluid Master 7530 Wax-Free Toilet Seal Kit. 
Avoid the temptation to double up gaskets, which can cause them to misalign and leak below. A quick word on the ever popular wax gasket. I know I'm in the minority, but I am not a fan of wax for several reasons. To name a few, they damage easily. They can't be compressed or they have no bounce. They don't withstand plunging pressures very well and are subject to melting if near a heat source, such as a heating duct, and are messy and difficult to remove. And well, just look at that. That's, that's just wrong. If you disagree, please do feel free to let me know in the comments below to set me straight. In this case, because the flange is slightly below the floor, we're gonna be utilizing a one inch thick gasket. You can test the gasket's thickness by temporarily placing the gasket in place and resting the toilet bowl atop it. You want to check and carefully feel for a very slight bounce or resistance as you lower the toilet, indicating that the gasket is properly compressing. No resistance or the inability to fully push the bowl to the floor indicates that your gasket is incorrectly sized. Many toilets sold in big box stores now include flange bolts, nuts and washers. Again, I'm critical of these components and usually throw them out. First, they're not as thick as the standard brass bolts used by professionals. And what's worse, the components provided are made of steel, which is prone to rusting. This is contrary to the building code's requirement that all such fastening hardware be made of a corrosion resistant material which may come back to bite you in the future if one of those corroded steel bolts break off or cannot be removed for servicing. In comparison, the separate bolt sets available at plumbing suppliers are 25% thicker, made of solid brass, and therefore will virtually never rust or corrode. But if you choose to use the shoddy bolts included with your toilet, I won't judge. Although I may cry a little. Before proceeding to install your new toilet, practice some due diligence by cleaning and disinfecting the area beneath the footprint of the old toilet, which tends to naturally get rather gross and cruddy over the years, especially if the toilet has been utilized by a household containing young boys, who don't usually have the most accurate, uh, aim. I know, some of you guys are fretting about not being a maid service and blah blah blah, but remember that you're the only one who has access to the surface. It's just the right thing to do. But enough chatter from me. Let's hear what this fine, strong, handsome man has to say about the situation. We'll proceed with slipping in these closet bolts. Now, if you notice, there's a bit of a hole down there. So if we put these bolts in, it might fall right through. So there's a bit of a trick that we can use. We can apply a little piece of cardboard or paper as we slip this into the slot. That will help hold this while you put the toilet on top. All we need is a thin strip of cardboard. Now we'll proceed to wrap this cardboard around the toilet bolt. Then we'll slip the toilet bolt into its slot. It doesn't matter if the cardboard sticks out a bit because we will not be sealing here, we'll be sealing here when the toilet sits on top of the gasket. We're gonna do the same thing with the other side. A bit of cardboard. And the cardboard's not an issue. Once this, once the toilet gets fastened, the cardboard's done its job. You don't really need to worry about it anymore. Now we reconfirm that the gasket is indeed centered and we could proceed with installing the toilet bowl. With the toilet bolts and sponge gasket properly aligned and centered, straddle over the toilet bowl and pick it up underneath the seating area on each side while positioning and aligning the bowl's bolt holes directly over the protruding bolts. Slowly lower it straight down vertically, being careful not to push down on the bolts. If both bolts enter the bowl holes, your gasket will perfectly align with the bowl's discharge holes. You can make some very minor rotational adjustments to ensure that the bowl is square with the back wall. You can do so by comparing the tank holes at the back of the bowl. If it is misaligned, you may be able to slightly rotate the bowl until both holes measure the same distance to the back wall. Be sure to pivot over the flange and that you're not excessively moving the toilet, which may shift the flange gasket and cause leakage. Next, take the short plastic decorative caps and discs that came with your toilet and proceed to install the disc over a flange bolt. So that your caps can properly snap onto the discs, it's important to install the discs with the this side up printing facing, well, up. Next, we place the brass washer over the bolt. And finally, we proceed to tighten the brass nut onto the bolt until it's just hand tight. 
repeat the procedure for the other side. Using your pliers, or even better, an open-end wrench or socket driver, evenly tighten the bolt nuts on each side until they're just snug. I can't overemphasize this enough. Over-tightening will lead to either cracking your shiny new toilet bowl or damaging the plastic flange beneath, or both. Trust me, I know. Once snug, press down firmly and thump along the front edge of the bowl. You want the base on this end to be solidly touching the floor, as this is where all the user's weight will be. If the bowl rocks or has play, we'll need to shim to support any gaps. Before we can do so, we'll proceed with installing the tank. If the tank to bowl bolts and rubber washers are not pre-installed, proceed to do so, noting the following. If the tank to bowl bolts include metal washers, be sure to slip one metal washer onto the bolt before the rubber washer. Otherwise, the tank will not seal properly, resulting in leakage from the tank bolts. Proceed to install the tank to bowl gasket, ensuring that the gasket impression aligns with the tank's gigantic plastic nut. Align the tank's bolts with the bowl's holes and lower it straight down into place. Underneath the bowl, proceed to install and hand tighten the included nuts and washers onto the tank to bowl bolts. With both nuts in place, proceed to tighten down the tank using the included fastening tool or a half inch nut driver or socket alternating each side so that both sides tighten evenly. If the bolt spins when installing the nut, press down on the bolt head with your other hand or hold it with a flat screwdriver. It may help to gently push down on the tank to compress the gasket to make tightening easier. Continue to do so only until the tank's bottom touches the bowl. You can confirm this by gently rocking the tank back and forth to ensure that it's sitting solid. There should be no movement. Again, do not over tighten. With the added weight of the tank, double check the toilet to ensure it's sitting firmly on the ground. As you can see, our toilet's rocking, indicating that something is uneven between the floor and the toilet. Slightly loosen both flange bolts to provide some leeway for the shims, which you will insert into any gaps as required along the back of the toilet, if possible. Once the shims are inserted, proceed to retighten the toilet. Continue to snug up the other side, thereby compressing the shim and securing it into place. Don't cut the shims just yet, in case you may need to fine tune this process to get it just right. With the toilet shimmed and secured into place, we'll proceed to finally connect the toilet to the water supply valve. To do so, you'll require a 3 8 inch OD by 7 8 inch toilet supply tube, available in 12 inch and 20 inch lengths. When purchasing a toilet supply, be sure to get one made of braided stainless steel, which is much stronger than the nylon lookalikes, and that it's long enough so that there's no stress or tension anywhere along the supply when connected between the toilet and the supply valve. But what do I know? Let's hand the rest off to our dashing, heroic expert installer. So one mistake that a lot of people make, when they fasten this nut, onto the fill valve supply of the toilet. They tend to over tighten it. You do not want to over tighten this, this nut. This has been the cause of many a floods in homes of homeowners or even plumbers who have over tightened this nut. You just want to hand tighten it snug. And if you're ever replacing a toilet, do not use the old braided supply. Inside is only a composition of rubber or synthetic rubber. Over time, that rubber hardens and, um, and, and can lead to failure. So make sure you spend the extra money and install new supplies whenever you're changing the toilet. So we're gonna bend this carefully and align it and just hand tighten it for now. Try and twist your supply. Try and twist it so that it coils or spirals to minimize specific tension at any one spot along it. And then we just give it a snug tightening When this begins to turn, 
along with your tightening, you know you've tightened enough. So I would just hold the main uh, supply line and just give it another quarter turn and you should be good. I like to turn the water on because I like to be present while the water's running. So if there are any issues, I have more time to discover them while I'm on site. Now these old valves, especially if they haven't been used for many years, they tend to leak right at the stem. If there are any leaks, you can always tighten the packing. They're just giving it a little snug tightening. So now our toilet is filling. And if you notice, the water level is right at the overfill tube, which is not good. These usually come with um, an optimistic fill level. If this is too high, you might end up with continually running water and uh, water leaks over time. Not rather water leaks, but wasted water. And uh, it might run continuously and cost you a big water bill. So we want to adjust this. And now I'm gonna turn this little dial. When I turn counterclockwise, the dial ends up lowering the float. The float is what controls the flow of water. When the float goes up by the pressure of the water, then it stops flow. Once you flush, it continues to flow. So the more you lower that float, the sooner the water level will stop. So we're gonna keep testing that until we're approximately one inch below the edge of that overfill valve. And that's pretty good. So let's give it a test flush. And this is the moment of truth. This is where we look all around the rim. Because now that we installed the toilet and placed it on top of the gasket, we cannot physically see if it is leaking. Some people like the silicone around the rim. I'm not a fan of that. If you ever need to take apart the toilet, um, it gets messy and it takes a bit of work. Uh, some people argue it's a good idea, especially if you have kids who tend to not aim properly. It's easier to keep it clean, but that's a matter of preference. If you do apply silicone, make sure you leave a little bit of opening in the back. Do not silicone the back, because in the event that there is a leak at the gasket, water will slip out and it will give you a visual indicator that there's a leak. If you silicone all around it, the water has no means of escaping and you might not find out there's a leak until your ceiling caves in. I like to flush multiple times and continuously flush to make sure it operates properly. and that it's sitting sturdy. If the toilet needs any adjustment or tightening, you can always do so. Check down here. Check the tank to bowl areas to make sure no water is dripping. Check also the existing valve to make sure that there's no water dripping from the stem. If it is dripping from the stem, as I, as I mentioned earlier, try to tighten the packing a little bit. That usually stops it. Now these don't have any grips. Some toilet seats come with little rubber grips or pads. These don't come with them. Drop in the bolts. We need to make sure that this toilet seat is aligned nicely on both sides and even. Now, because these little nuts that come with the toilet seat have a little wing at the end, you can't really turn it underneath because you're gonna end up hitting the body of the bowl. So we're just gonna place it underneath, hold it, and proceed to tighten it with our tool. And you're always tightening both sides evenly. Whenever you have something that's the same on both sides, you're gonna do it evenly. Once your bolt's tightened, and this is all nice and even, just close the flaps at the back, good to go. And we can proceed to install the caps. Remember the this side up warning on that disc? Well, this is the reason. And also we're gonna get rid of whatever residual material we have of that chimp. Because it's rubberized, take a sharp knife and cut even as evenly around it as you can. Now you might see a little bit of it, but that's the nature of the floor. There's not much we can do about that. If this bothers you, again, you can take a bit of silicone and make your way around it, leaving the back exposed to allow any leaking water to escape. And let's do the same thing for the other side. Give it another flush for good luck, and we are done. And so that's how you properly replace a toilet. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please be sure to plunge that like button, make sure to subscribe to this channel, 
And if there's anything specifically you'd like to see, please do leave your comments in the section below and I'll do my best to make it happen. Meanwhile, I thank you guys for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I'm pretty good. Oh! Who forgot to flush?